Okay, sorry that I have to go into a second video to um, narrate the rest of our slideshow on the learning environment um, for high scope. So this was the slide we ended on, which was part of the house area. Um, let's move on to the next slide. This is also a shelf that would be in the house area, so you can see just another shelf of neat components that they could use. Um, these also could double for um, a science area or um, some fine motor work as well. So again, just some different things to use um, in that house area. This is the science and numbers area, so you can see that the areas are all labeled. You can see that in some of the slides that they're labeled with these nice big posters with very simple drawings um, in the name of the center um, there. And so anytime they see this picture, um, anywhere in the classroom they know that that means the science and numbers area. So you can see that there's a table there for them to work with um, and different things that they can do. Here's one of the shelving units that have different manipulatives for them to use for math, for counting, some science books there. Um, just all types of different resources for the students to use, engage in at their leisure and how they want to. Here's another shelf with different items on it. These are some more math items and manipulatives for the students to use in that area. Here's another science shelf. You can see um, there's a pet hermit crab there. Um, you can see actually kind of right here there's a pot. Um, I didn't get a good picture of that plant, but there's more plants over here. So they do have life in the classroom as well, so they can learn about taking care of the plants and the animals. You can see that there are science books there and different um, real objects um, like rocks and shells there as well. This is moving into the art area. You can see there's an easel there. There's another one of those big posters that label the center so the students know what area they're in. Here is one of the shelves in the art area. So you can see uh, very nicely labeled containers so the students know exactly what goes in the container so when they're putting it away, um, what is in the container so they know what they're getting out. So a lot of variety of items for the students to choose from whenever they're in the art center for them to um, work with those materials. Um, how they would like. Again, it's very open-ended. The teacher doesn't tell the students how to use the materials. They're there for them to use um, as freely as they would like to use. Uh, again, there's another shelf of just items, different collage items, again, that they can use however they like. If they want to make three-dimensional items, if they want to glue them on paper, um, they want to draw on them, however they want to use them. Again, the teacher doesn't tell them how to use the items. They are there for the children to choose, make choices with, and to create things that they would like to create with. And then there's another shelf. This is um, part of the art area as well, but you can see that it has a lot of literacy items. There's different um, tools there that they can write on, things where they can access um, different letters so they can know how to uh, draw letters and spell things. There's also some Play-Doh tools at the bottom there that you can see. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then this is one of their open spaces in the classroom. So you can see this is a nice tiled area. There's a sink there, so um, this is opposite of where the art area is. So whenever the students do get messy with paint or Play-Doh or clay or whatever it may be that they're working with, that there's a sink there that's accessible for the students to use to wash their hands. This is also a table that they may do a small group at, some different work, um, or eat a, their snack or lunch there as well. So you can see that there's different flooring in the classroom as well. This is looking back the other way. There's another um, half moon table there. That half moon table is a space where they do their artwork as well because you can see the tile underneath so that it's easy to clean up if they do spill paint or glue or play-doh on the floor. It's easily cleaned up. That's a half moon table is um, another table where they might do a small group um, with children. This is on the tiled area as well and they'll probably pull it out whenever students are using it and it's a sand a sensory table right now there's sand in it with different tools that the children can explore with but it can be filled with um, a whole variety of materials you can put water in it you can put um, popcorn peanuts in it you can put um, little rocks or pebbles so it, the possibilities are endless of the things that you can fill the sensory table with this was over in the science and numbers area, but I just wanted to point it out because we'll be talking a lot about small group time. And so small group time is whenever the teachers in the classroom divide the children up and do a little bit more focused activity. It still has um, much choice 
on the part of the students, but it, it does happen in a small group. So you can see there that the students have um, some items set up for a small group activity. It looks like they have some little linking um, chains there that they were able to create whatever they want with. Um, you can also see right here these work in progress signs. These you will see um, numerous places throughout the classroom. And so anytime a child creates something and they're not quite finished yet, they can stick this work in progress sign up and it, it alerts the other students and the teachers in the classroom not to, not to move it, not to clean it up yet, that it is still being used. And then one of the final things I wanted to point out is that each child in the classroom does have some personal storage. Um, so this is a, just an example of one of the cubbies. In the Child Learning Center, you can see that their name is on it, again, with that letter link picture. So anytime that they see their name, there's also that picture as well, so they can start to associate that sound of their name um, with the same sound that the, is in the picture. And it's just space where they can put their backpack, their coat, um, whenever it gets to be <clears throat> cold and snowy here, then they can put their, their snow pants and boots and all that good gear there as well. So that ends our slideshow on the um, learning environment in high school. I hope this was able to help you better understand um, the many facets of the learning environment. And we will be um, approaching a lot of these subjects throughout the semester um, that we talked about in this slideshow as well. So that's all I have for now. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.